It's you. It's me. It's Friday. Yeah, what a tough work week, huh? Canvas, I ready, back to Canvas, doing I ready, maybe some Moby Max and some Raz Kids. And reading counts. Don't forget that. I'm still tracking those points. Elphis comes over and he kind of gives me some updates. So I'm watching you. You're doing great. Well, guess what? If you've been paying attention, and if you haven't, you can always go back and re-listen. We're going to finish Mrs. Ruby's Loopy Tonight by Dan Bootman. So remember, this was a 2.5 reading level. It's worth four points. That's awesome. All right. And since it's Friday and there's two chapters left, we have to finish the story because I can't wait until Monday. That'd be ridiculous. I know you can't either. Gosh, Lammy, is he's been hiding this book. And I swear every time I'm, I look at him, I feel like the book was open, but then he closes it real quick. You're not reading ahead, are you, Lammy? Okay. I believe you. I know it's very interesting, though. Okay, so we're going to chapter 11. Now, if you remember last night, what we read was that George Washington was somewhere without his clothes on. But I chipped in there. I kind of believe that uh, he's probably like in a bathing suit. Maybe he went to the beach and just hung up all that um, army attire because it'd probably be pretty hot and sweaty at the beach if you were wearing that. I mean, they used to wear like wool head to toe in the summer. Had to be hot. I don't know how they made it. We were so tough back then. I feel like I'm so, so measly and so not tough. I'm going to toughen up this summer. I'm going to wear wool head to toe. Just like George Washington. But I'm going to brush my teeth a lot to make sure I don't have wooden teeth or cow's teeth for that matter. Do you know I still haven't looked that up? Have you? Darn it. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Okay. Chapter 11. Just admit it. Gosh, I was feeling really bad for Mrs. Rupi last night. She was so upset and worried for George Washington because I bet you'd get in trouble if you go out without your clothes on. I'm never going to try that because I don't ever want to get in trouble. Good idea. Good idea. Don't you do it either. Okay, chapter 11. Here we go. Just admit it. It was no use. Even after we proved to Mrs. Rupee that she was dressing up as all these characters, she still wouldn't admit it. Mrs. Rupee is in denial, Andrea said when we got back to the classroom. I'll bet you don't know what that means, AJ. Sure, I know what denial means, I said. It's that river in Africa. <laughs> denial. <laughs> that is rich. Not the Nile, dumbhead. Denial. It means she can't admit to herself that she has a problem. So what are we supposed to do now? Michael asked. There's only one thing we can do, Andrea said. We've got to tell Mr. Klutz. Mr. Klutz is the principal, which means he's kind of like the king of the school. One time I got into trouble and was sent into Mr. Klutz's office. When I got there, he didn't punish me. He gave me a candy bar. Mr. Klutz is nuts. I'll tell you, he needed punishment. I'm sure of it. With all the yelling out and no hands raised that he does. We told Miss Daisy that we had to speak with Mr. Klutz and that it was a matter of life and death. She called the office and in a few minutes, Mr. Klutz arrived. Mr. Klutz has no hair at all. We told him all about the crazy things Mrs. Rupee had been doing and how Andrea's mother is a psychologist and she thinks Mrs. Rupee might have a big problem. We're really worried about her, Emily said. Hmm, this sounds pretty serious, Mr. Klutz said. Maybe we'd better go and have a chat with Mrs. Rupee. Mr. Klutz led us down the hall to the library. When we got there, Mrs. Rupee was lying on the floor under the treehouse. She was holding her head like she'd been hit. Not only that, but Mrs. Rupee was really fat. It looked like she had gained about a million hundred pounds. 
I was going to say, that is, now that's rude. What happened, Mrs. Ruby? Michael asked. Are you okay? Mrs. Ruby, who's that? Mrs. Ruby said, my name is Humpty Dumpty. I was sitting on that wall up there and I had a great fall. Don't tell me, Andrea said. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put you back together again, right? How, how did you know? Mrs. Ruby asked. You're not Humpty Dumpty, Andrea said. You're Mrs. Ruby, our librarian. Just admit it. Doesn't matter who it is, Mr. Clutt said. There has been an injury. I need to write a report and give it to the Board of Education. You can give it to me, I told Mr. Klutz. I'm bored of education. Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Mr. Klutz said he had to go call a doctor for, Miss, for Humpty Dumpty. Mrs. Rupee got off the floor and dusted herself off. Wait a minute, I said. I have a question. Yes, AJ, Miss, asked Mrs. Ruby. Your name is Humpty Dumpty, right? Right. What I want to know is, why did your parents name you Humpty? I mean, if their last name was already Dumpty, they could have named you like John or Jim or Joe or something normal. But they had to go and name you Humpty? Well, actually, Humpty is just my nickname, Mrs. Ruby said. My real name is Lumpy. L Lumpy Dumpty, I said. Yes, said Mrs. Ruby. So you can see why I'd rather be called Humpty. Andrea was getting all angry now. Mrs. Ruby was simply not going to admit she wasn't Humpty Dumpty. Nursery rhyme week is over, Mrs. Ruby, Andrea said. You can be yourself. You can stop pretending to be other people. Don't you like nursery rhymes? Asked Mrs. Rupee. Oh, I thought it was Humpty Dumpty. I wonder what that... Well, wait. I don't think that went together. Oh, sure I do, Andrea said. But enough is enough. I hate nursery rhymes, she said. Nursery rhymes are dumb. I'm sick of nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes are boring. Humpty, I mean, Mrs. Rupee looked hurt. Everything is boring to you, AJ, she said sadly. I tried so hard not to bore you. Please tell me, what is not boring to you? I put on my thinking cap. Well, not really. And tried real hard to think of something that wasn't boring. Trick bikes, I said. Trick bikes aren't boring. Chapter 12. The proof! I wonder if they're going to find the proof yet. Gosh, I'm feeling a little bit sad for Mrs. Rupee. I mean, does she have personal problems? I don't know. I'm so confused. Let's see if we can find the proof. Come on, let's just keep reading. The proof. It was in, it was the middle of our afternoon snack time. I traded my pretzel sticks with Ryan for his cup of chocolate pudding. Suddenly I heard somebody yelling down the hallway. Watch out! Coming through! Out of the way! I wonder what it could be, said Miss Daisy. The yelling got louder. Everybody in the class turned around just in time to see somebody ride into our classroom on a trick bike. It was Mrs. Ruby! She was wearing sunglasses, knee pads, elbow pads, and a floppy black t-shirt that said, Bikers for books. She had combed her hair to make it stick up all spiky. Hey, dudes, she said as she skidded to a stop right in front of my desk. I just totally landed an awesomely tweaked tail whip with a Superman seat grab to a toothpick grind. You should have seen it. It was really sick. Everybody put down their snacks and gathered around my desk to look at Mrs. Rupee's cool bike. I didn't know you knew so much about trick biking, Mrs. Rupee. I said, I'm not Mrs. Rupee, Mrs. Rupee said. I'm a professional trick biker. You are not, 
We all hollered, You're Mrs. Rupee, the librarian! I'm not! R2! Certainly looks like a trick biker to me, said Miss Daisy. So I came up with the most genius idea in the history of the world. Mrs. Rupee's tattoo! Going back to that weird time when she showed them her belly tattoo? Getting, it's getting interesting now. I remembered that she had a picture of a heart on her belly button. I've been thinking about this this whole time. Who knew? Maybe this could be the, the problem solver. You're Mrs. Ruby, I said, grabbing the bottom of her t-shirt, and I can prove it. Oh, stop that, Mrs. Ruby giggled. I'm ticklish. When I yanked at her shirt, three books fell out. One of them hit my snack on the desk. The cup of chocolate pudding went flying. It splashed all over Mrs. Ruby's tummy. It almost covered up the tattoo of a heart. But we could still see it. It's Mrs. Ruby! Michael shouted. The proof is in the pudding! Hey! Ryan shouted. Check out these books! Ryan picked up the books that had dropped on the floor. They were books about trick biking. One of the books showed how to do tricks, and the other two were about famous trick bikers. Cool. I didn't know they made books about trick biking, Ryan said. So that's how you know so much about trick biking, Mrs. Ruby? I said. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Ruby said. I'm a professional trick biker. Can I check these books out of the library? Asked Michael. No, I get them first, Ryan said. Hey, I was the one who found them, I said. Mrs. Daisy grabbed all the books. Gee, I don't know, AJ, she said. You said that reading was boring, so you probably wouldn't want to read these books. Those teachers are tricky, I'm telling you. Yes, I would! I shouted, please. Well, okay, Mrs. Daisy said as she handed each of us one of the trick bike books. But if you don't bring these back on time, Mrs. Ruby is going to lock you in the dungeon on the third floor. We all looked at Mrs. Ruby. Later, dudes, she said. And with that, Mrs. Ruby went pedaling out into the hallway. I felt sorry for Mrs. Ruby. She is the loopiest librarian I've ever met. I think she's got a big problem. We're going to do all we can to help her. But it won't be easy. The end! My gosh, this is Ruby. What a weird school. You know what I'm most impressed with? Is her awesome ability to just be a trick bike rider. I mean, was that really her? Are we sure we didn't meet the trick bike rider first who had the tattoo of the heart on their stomach and then they pretended to be Mrs. Ruby? Did she know how to do all those crazy awesome tricks? Did she really learn that from the books? Maybe you could. No. I just saw my friend fall off his bike the other day. I was scared for him. He hurt his knee. So if you're going to try to be a trick bike rider, wear knee pads just like Mrs. Ruby because I think that's important. Okay, guys, what are we going to read next week? You don't know? I don't know either. Or do I? Or don't I? Is there something to read? I don't know. Will I be here? Will you be here? Who knows? It's a new week. But I'm sure I'll see you. And thanks for coming over again. It always makes my weekend so nice when I get to see you guys at the end of my Friday, right before I go to bed. Because I am tired. This week is, this week has really worn me out. You too? I know. All right, let's go to sleep. Are you ready? Okay. Good night. Good night. Get a good night's sleep. Have a lot of fun this weekend. And we'll see you Monday. All right, bye. Bye.